Okay, you can start whenever you like, council member. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Welcome to the Planning and Land Use Management Committee. I've been joined by the Honorable Councilman Jack Weiss. And um, I don't believe Councilman Brissard will be joining us today. We do have a committee, so I want to thank Councilman Weiss for being here. We have several items on the agenda. And um, there are several that are being continued. And um, let's just go through the agenda really quick and see where we're at. I have one, I understand we're going to continue to April 28th and to prom schedule from May 8th. May 8th in council. So April 28th in prom and May 8th in council. Item 2, we have some instructions, but that has also been continued to May 5th. Schedule for PAM at Cinco de Mayo and May 12th to Council. <laughs> that does come with instructions. I just want to state them for the record. Um, we will direct the City Attorney to deliver to the Clerk a final development agreement and ordinance and direct the City Attorney to deliver to the Clerk a final specific PAM ordinance uh, for those dates. So that will be the instructions for item number 2. 2A. And the same for 2B, continue to May 5th, and council for May 12th. Number 3 is special. Do you have speaking cards on that one, Barbara? On 3? Uh, yeah, there's speaking cards on 3 also, too, if, if you so desire for those items. Okay. 1 and 2. You have speaker cards on 1 and 2 as well? Oh, yeah. Yes. Well, Go through all the continuances, then we'll ask folks if they want to come back. Sorry about No problem. Yeah. Okay. I have three ones special with one card. Um, item 4A will continue to April 21st. That will be for committee and in council April 24th. Council member, that's been further extended in council to the 29th. To the 29th, okay. okay. And 4B will be the same? Correct. Okay. And we don't have the director's uh, oral status report today, but uh, we always welcome her when she's here. Um, item 1, since we've continued, we have an Albert Novarte. Do you still want to speak, sir? You still want to speak today, even though we're not going to have the item today. We are not going to have the item today. We're going to continue it okay. for another day. Are you yes, well, I'm giving you the dates for item one. We're going to have it here on April 28th and in City Council on May 8th. It's probably more appropriate if you like to speak at that time. Okay? And 2A and B, we do have a card from a Lucinda Starrett, and obviously you do not need to speak today, but if you feel... No, I, I was just here in case for any questions. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. you might make us uh, reach a real record here, but we'll see. Item 3 is what we do have, special... Roberto, want to start with item three? <clears throat> yes, Councilman. Uh, item three is a categorical exemption. It's an appeal by Erica Hahn from the decision of the zoning administrator. Uh, she's appealing two conditions, the hours of operation and the security guard uh, with respect to the operation of a business known as Ken's Liquor in CD9. Good afternoon, Pat Brown. I'm Sony Administrator of Record on this case. As clerk stated, the uh, owner is appealing to the conditions. Just a little bit of history. This is Ken's Market. It's been the subject of problems for numerous years. Yeah, Pat, can you speak a little closer oh, to the sorry. mic? We hear you a lot better. The acoustics here are terrible. Okay. This is Kins Market. It's been a problem in this area for a number of years. And through uh, efforts of the community and neighborhood prosecutor, it was brought to the, 
to revocation. And the hearing was held in December of last year. At the hearing, there was testimony. Uh, there are numerous arrest records of the problems that exist at this uh, particular market. They included loitering, many, many arrests for drinking in public. So I imposed conditions, corrective conditions, and as your clerk stated, two of those are being appealed. One is for security. I require that the security be on the property during all hours in which the business is open. The second condition is for, um, what I'm blanking out, is for uh, hours closing. According to the information I have, this business operates until 12 midnight. I cut it back by two hours. What we've seen in the arrest records are a number of crimes and arrests, and these arrests are as late as in the file, there are the records, as late as 11.40 at night. What the neighbor said is they're having problems with people buying alcohol, going into the alley, drinking it, and then they're keeping everybody up all night. So because of all the arrests that are occurring all day, all hours of the day, I recommended the security guard be on the property all day in which they're open, and uh, they cut those hours by two hours to 10. Okay. Well, thank you, Pat. And uh, we do have speaker cards here. And I'd like to ask um, Senior Officer Catherine Durant from the Senate Senate Division she to come on up. And uh, that way we can get you out of this room as soon as possible. But I appreciate your hard work. I know it's uh, uh, challenging to be able to balance all of these uh, demands. But I appreciate your being here. Thank you. I appreciate you having me and uh, giving me the form to speak. Um, I've been employed with the Los Angeles Police Department for about 14 and a half years. I've spent 13 of those at 77th Division, so I know the area well. I've been the senior lead officer for the area in which Ken's Liquor Store uh, is located at 7535 South Broadway. I've been the senior lead officer there since 2004. Um, just to give you a little bit about my background uh, with the store is... Uh, the numerous problems that have occurred there. I think they were already established on the December 2nd hearing, so I won't go into much detail, but quality of life issues, uh, drinking in public, urinating, vomiting, loitering, um, a, a lot of different activity has occurred on the premises. And as the senior lead officer, I've been very frustrated in trying to gain compliance with uh, the managers or owners, and uh, it wasn't until forced with these conditions that things are now improving. And I'll be honest with you, they have improved a lot. I have been very, very happy thus far. And I have, um, I've been very fortunate to develop a partnership and a good working relationship with Ms. Hahn and the property owner, Ms. Falk. And um, I don't think that it's unreasonable to, to keep these, to have these conditions impl implemented regarding the hours and regarding a security guard, and I'll tell you my reasons why. Uh, number one, the security guard, so from 4 o'clock on, the security guard has now been there from 4 o'clock on, and I work all different hours, all days of the week. And um, yes, the security guard being there has helped tremendously. And he keeps the quote-unquote riffraff off the property. He waters the, the pavement. I mean, he, he, does, he does a little bit of everything there. And there's still activity occurring before 4 o'clock. And I have a stack of reports here from November 2008 until present day. There's 15 of them here, 14 which are still drinking in public. And five of them are in the AM hours. So that's about a third of the reports. So even though, and this, this is with the activity decreasing tremendously. So you can imagine how it was before. And I think, uh, I know that if we have a security guard there during all hours of operation, I, c I can just see maybe having a, a huge decrease in, the, in these uh, instances that are occurring. Regarding the hours of operation, I originally wanted it, I wanted them to open up at 9 a.m. I did not think 7 a.m., I didn't think there was a reason a liquor store, especially across from a police station and a block away from an elementary school, should be open at 7 o'clock, but I was willing okay, I'll, I'll go from 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock as long as they cut it off at 10 o'clock because they were open till midnight and on Fridays and Saturdays they were open till 2 a.m. Mm. And there were, during that three-year period, there were numerous uh, multiple calls for service after 10 p.m. So as I said, we have an elementary school, we have a police station, and 
you know, I know that Miss Han is is doing her best to stay afloat here, and and she's she's been helpful and um, with with this working relationship okay. with me. It's just I, I I'm I'm a little um, upset that it took this long to get the owners to comply. So it's been it's been frustrating, but it's been nice to see the improvements as the senior lead officer. And I'll, I'll I know. No, no, I'm it's important to hear this because this is for the record. Okay. And we need to build the record. Okay. Uh, commission did its job. Now we're in perm, and this committee needs to make sure that we have this on the record for further actions if necessary. Okay. I just wanted to say a couple more points, if you don't mind. Um, you know, South Bureau of LAPD is located right across the street. They're within the 77th station. And everybody drives by Ken's Liquor. It's kind of like a staple. It's been there forever. My father retired LAPD 30 years. He remembers Ken's Liquor. I mean, everybody used to go to Ken's Liquor. And as the senior lead officer, I'm in charge of what goes on in my area. And I'm in charge of abatements and gang locations and narcotic locations and drinking and quality of life issues. And when I have my captain or my commander coming up to me several years ago, hey, what are you doing about Ken's Liquor? It looks horrible over there. And, well, we're working on it. We're getting arrested. Across right? the street, correct? Exactly. So, and, and it's been nice hearing them say lately, and as well as the citizens who live uh, the residents who live at 317, right, right behind the store, 317 West 76, and other people in the area, they've been saying, um, thank you, thank you, thank you, whoever is involved. We, we really appreciate the work you're, you guys are doing. Keep it up. It's improved, and we want to keep it that way. And the final point that I wanted to make is I can't foresee the future. I, I don't know when and if the ownership's going to change. It could change five more times in my career with LAPD. It could change ten more. It may remain the same. I think it's important to keep these conditions in place for future uh, quality of life maintenance because otherwise I can just see it going downhill again. Right. I have had the opportunity to drive by there on occasion for different reasons going to the southern part of the city and I have actually stopped in that police facility and I recall looking across the street and thinking this feels like a, a Bronx movie uh, where the station's in the middle of all this madness, and it seems like no one really cares. So I do appreciate this type of action because we're seeing results. And uh, I went to there in the morning hours, and it was pretty insane. Afternoon, didn't let up, and as the toilet was kicking in the evening, I was blown away. I was like, wow. And, and right across the street from the police station. So... Um, I share the frustration because when you see it from a distance, it looks worse. But imagine the people living next to that and uh, 24 hours, seven days a week. So thank you for your hard work. Thank you for, thank you too. Okay. Um, Councilman, anything? Okay. Let's proceed with um, the next uh, group of speakers. Uh, Erica Hahn, Rashawn Davis, and Elsie Butts. Who would like to come up first? Thank you. Good My name is Butts, L.C. Butts, and I stay directly behind uh, Ken's Liquor. An apartment building, apartment three. I'm sorry, sir. Can you speak into the microphone so we could hear you better? Okay. I stay directly behind Ken's Liquor in apartment building, apartment number three. And uh, we came down here before to talk about what was happening around that liquor store. And today I'm back because I had nothing but bad news when I came down before. So much was happening, but I come back here today to, to say it's 110% better. The building didn't paint it. They, they, um, they have fenced it in, beautiful fence, gates. They have a uh, guard on the premises, and they are no uh, bombs. Liquor are coming around them. They don't lie it no more. And we appreciate that very much. And I have told her that the owner 
that uh, we do appreciate. And this lit up, they have floodlights that way past midnight around that store. It's, the store has been painted. And they have light on the back of their store and a camera to stop the graffiti. I have nothing but praise for them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bates. I do know uh, Ms. Erica Hahn is the appellant. I'd like to come on up. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Erica Hahn, and I represent Erica Ivy Corporation, uh, doing business as Ken's Liquor in question. Um, before I begin my presentation, um, my sincere apology goes to everybody gathered here today, my neighbors and patrons and law enforcement officers who have been suffered over the years because of all these problems that we have caused in the past. Um, I have been an owner of Ken's Liquor since uh, March of 2006, and um, I had a managing partner who has an expertise in a liquor store business running the business. I was not directly involved with the store, so I know it's not an excuse, but I had no knowledge of having all these problems at my store. Um, when I first initiated the uh, purchase of the liquor store, the first thing that uh, attracted me the most was it's, cr it's right across the street from a police department. If there is any problem starts in my store, it's going to be well taken care of by the police department. And what I did not realize was I, as an owner, my 100% cooperation, and I have to work with the police officers to get their job done. And I regret that very much today. Um, I was not aware of having all these problems until November of last year um, through my landlord. Um, my landlord was very concerned that she received a letter from the city of Los Angeles, uh, a possible revocation of our license. Um, we had a hearing. Uh, we had a hearing on uh, December 4th of 2007, 2008, I'm sorry, last year, and without having any prior knowledge of what had happened in my store, I was stunned. I was just shocked to learn what had happened, and I completely ignored, or I, whether I uh, was aware of it or not, I take full and complete responsibility. Um, I wish my managing partner paid more attention and either he notified me or he was more attentive to the business, but blaming anybody today, I, there's just the one, just the only thing was that came to cross my mind. I have to fix these problems. And from that time and on, I took the immediate possession of the business, and I am there seven days, uh, about nine to ten hours a day. And the um, city of Los Angeles imposed 29 conditions on my store, and I am very proud to say that everything has been complied, except just the two items that I would like to um, uh, challenge before you. Um, I never done this before. Should I go over each and every well, item? Just go over the two that the two that you're concerned with. Okay. Um, do you have a copy? Yes. Of let's the just go ahead and have it. Those are in front of us. item number nine. It's uh, hours of operation, and um, currently we are licensed to operate until two o'clock, seven days. And um, I understand the reason for the city of Los Angeles would like to reduce the business hours to protect people around us and the people living behind the alley. Um, we have a, a armed security guard there until closing time. And uh, there is no, I understand my business was a public nuisance, but it's no longer a harm, no longer a threat to a community.
Um, I have installed a security camera in the back alley, and uh, ever since we installed a security camera, there is no illegal activities in the rear alley and no graffitis so far. Okay. And also, we have installed extra lights, so together we have a three lights total, and they are on all night long. Okay. Um, so nervous. Um, so um, you can maybe monitor us for just watch us for next, you know, three months or six months, and please just let us keep the normal business hours. And if there is any problem causes by um, having us the uh, opening hour or closing hours um, as usual, and I am willing to. Uh, a change or reduce the business hours or closing hours. And I can assure you that we'll be in a compliance of city conditions and will not cause any trouble with the city and the neighbors. And okay. uh, that's my hours of operation. Okay. Mm -hmm. That was the first point? Yes. You have another point you want to make? Yes, I have a last one. Okay. I have a two. Okay. And um, as I mentioned, we have a state licensed uniform security officer at the exterior of the store, and he patrols the site, discouraging loitering and any other uh, illegal activities at the property from 4 o'clock to closing. And I am personally there every day from opening to 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock every day, seven days. and. All through the morning, the most of my customers are kids, uh, people with the food stamps coming for a bread or it's or uh, milk or cereals, and I just don't see any reason to see have a security guard there from opening to closing. I am there. I permit no loitering, and I will not tolerate any people consuming alcohol or any illegal activities at the property or the back alley. Um, I um, Also, you can put us on either three months or six months a monitoring program. And if there is any problem causes from opening to 4 o'clock in the afternoon, I am willing to put a security guard there um, for, for from opening to closing. But for now, um, I don't know when was the last time you visited my store. Um, I brought a pictures. It's okay. We understand. We can give the pictures to the clerk. Okay. Um, we understood your two points, and I want to make sure I give you enough time to state your appeal. And I think we've done that. And um, so we'll conclude. Uh, do you have anything else to say to finish? Um, In closing? No, that's uh, okay. just those two items. Thank you very much. We do have two more speaker cards. We have Rashad Davis and Bandy Chappelle from Councilman John Perry's. Uh, Mr. Davis, are you, are you in the room? Oh, no, come on up to the mic. It's okay. We'll, we won't hurt you. We'll be friendly. He said, we need to put you on tape and we're recording this hearing. So it's a semi judicious. So you're okay. Just take a deep breath. <laughs> Well, I'm Roshan Davis, and really, I, all I have to say is she's doing an excellent job. It looks better. It's clean. She's keeping it clean, and I really, I don't have too much else to say. Okay. Well, but she's fine. doing a good job. Now, it's been for a few months, though, right? I mean, it has, it's been, this is recent. Yeah. Okay. See, we're talking about a history here that goes back 30, 40 years. So well, I just moved in the community like July. Okay, so you got fresh eyes on this one. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank, thank you, Thank you. Very thank much. you. Thank you for taking the time, uh, Mr. Pell. Sorry, That's okay. Good afternoon, Good everyone. Afternoon. I won't take too much of your time. We're going to be very succinct today. Councilmember Perry thought it was important enough for me to stop by and put yeah. her statements on the record. She is in support of the determination issued by the Office of Zoning Administration, which means that she's opposing the applicant's appeal. And she's not trying to cause an undue hardship on the applicant. However, if there's one thing that she wants you to remember or to know, rather, this liquor store is across the street from an elementary school. 
the applicant wouldn't be before you today if the store wasn't operated appropriately. The time frame in which they've cleaned up their operation is actually after I attended their public hearing and requested a revocation of their conditional use permit. Oh. So what she wants to see happen here is continued management and man good management at that, especially since it's across the street from the police division. And they are very supportive of the applicant, and we do acknowledge that. We respect their opinion, but the council member would like to, for you to uphold the decision that the zoning administrator made. What, what's your impression? Uh, we heard a request where they want us to monitor, mm -hmm. but yet continue with the hours that they have. And what I'm you say is, no, we want to curtail the hours and stick with the two conditions that have been stated by the planning department. What if we maintain those conditions and revisit in six months to see if we want to expand the hours or we don't even want to touch it? I think we can do that. We have a good relationship with 77th Division. Their opinion means a lot to Council Member Perry. So we are open to having a specific time period, if that's, if I'm understanding you correctly. Yes, Six in months. other words, we do sustain the mm -hmm. planner's recommendation. We curtail the hours, maintain okay. security, but in six months, if the senior lead officer feels comfortable in, in expanding it till 12, mm -hmm and shifting the security hours at the hours they're describing, if it helps the business to keep it open, is that something you're open to? We can agree to that only because 77th Police Division came to our office and spoke okay. up for the applicant. Well, well, let me ask the senior lead officer what she thinks about that. Senior lead officer Durant? I said, I'm trying to be business friendly, but I want to be realistic with the impact on our community. It's obvious until we took these serious steps did we get real action. You're frustrated as much as everyone else is in the neighborhood. I don't want to give them a reason to slip back to old habits. But if they are saying it's a business issue and they want to expand their hours, but we're not doing it the way they're asking. We're saying, no, we keep the two conditions. But in six months, if they want to stay open till 12, as long as there's no problems, how do you feel about that? I have mi I have mixed uh, feelings about that. Part okay. of me, part of me, the the soft part of me says I like Erica a lot. I, I'm glad that we have this relationship now, and um, I, I I'm very impressed at how quickly she's made these improvements and these uh, these conditions. And on the same and, and I and I, I I like you said you, you said the phrase perfectly. You don't you don't want to cause any undue financial stress on her or other kind of stress. However, the law enforcement side of me says, no, this has taken me years to get done. Task force after task force going to roll call, trying to get officers to do site after site after site and getting their enforcement and all the hard work of the city attorney and zoning and everybody coming together to help me. And as I said, I don't know what Ms. Hahn's plans are in the next five years. What if, okay. she, what if she's not the, the tenant? Okay. in two years and then it's someone else and then they let it go that that's my only thing I, I am I appreciate that and I'm, and I'm fine with the council members recommendation and yours I'm fine with it okay. just that we also give the appellant time to hear this discussion and that we are taking it to heart we do not want to be just punitive but at the same time they need to be held responsible for the conduct of their business and the imposition they created over the years and all of the dollars and resources already spent getting to this point, which is significant, especially in the area that should be focusing on other issues that are even more dramatic and hurtful in the community. So I respect that. And um, with that being said, that clears all of the public hearing cards and I'd like to recommend and, and sustain uh, the recommendations of the planning department with both conditions and deny the appeal. So that will be the action of this committee. Okay. We have one public comment card from Joan Taylor. I understand that. Okay. There was is Miss Taylor here? Yeah, she is hearing impaired, and there is, she just wants to go on the record. Uh, okay. There is no provision for this in this room yet for setting up a screen, but there will be. Some there will be. Yes. There will be a screen. Yeah. For Joan. Joan. People that are handicapped. She comes.
Good afternoon, ma'am. <clears throat> Chairman Rays, Council Members Riz and Weiss, I am Joan Taylor. I've brought to you a very controversial proposal. I'm going to bring it to three commissions and four council committees. I'm asking the commissions and the committees to join with the council as a mandate so that the 60 union drivers, van drivers involved, will not take a umbrage and take it out on Tom LeBronge or the members of his committee because this is part of a Department of Aging program. If you look at the papers that I have given you, the first said, the Los Angeles Business Journal, the mayor, they have both told you that we need a pri to privatize different fleet programs and you're facing a $400 million deficit, so you know it is time to look at some of these programs with a critical eye. If, and incidentally, Lara Chick, if you look at the fifth page of my presentation, Lara Chick has reviewed these papers and has sent them with her approval on to Glory, um, the uh, director of the De Department of Aging. So, and I also have included Henry Waxman's uh, compliment for my work for seniors in disabled transportation, some other work of the past. But here is, the, here is what you need to do. The Department of Aging has a program with 65 vans and drivers. Now, each of your 15 districts has four of these vans. And they are allocated to the senior center with social services in your district. Two of these vans, and if there's any error in my presentation, is because the Department of Aging refuses to give information. But two of these vans are used as a taxi service for the seniors and disabled if you call the senior center. These taxi vans are paid for by the, tax, by the taxpayer. Millions of dollars of purchase. We garage them. We pay the insurance companies for their keep. We pay the gasoline, the oil, the maintenance, the mechanics, all of this expense. And it ends up for each local ride that a senior or disabled takes, the taxpayer is putting out 60 or $70. Now this is for a local ride that your taxi, the, company would give you for eight to fifteen dollars it's a wasteful program I'm asking you uh, I understand that 30 of these 60 drivers are long-term employees okay. surely they can be absorbed into the uh, structure of the senior centers but get rid of the vans and I suggest that even cheaper than privatizing and going to a taxi company and bargaining with them give us through the senior centers, let us buy quarterly a second $84 taxi book. Thank you, Ms. Buy Thank these low income $6, Thank you. higher income $15. Thank We've you, already Thank got the groundwork done for this. It's the cheapest way. Thank you, Ms. And Thank don't buy that argument that the Thank Department of Aging gives you any special treatment. I appreciate uh, that. Don't, and Thank we you don't so need much. it. Please Thank you, Ms. keep Thank you. this and mandate through the council that Thank all. You that you do this program. Thank you. Thank you for coming to City Hall. Thank you very much. All right, folks, this meeting is adjourned.